Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that was Nathan Snumber from the uh, Jazz Drumming Reading Workbook by Tom Morgan. It's this book, and like I've said in the past sections of this series, it's a book I use all the time to teach reading in big band and combo jazz genre. So uh, that was in two in the beginning, and the tempo speeds up. I don't think they were using a, a click by the end. It's about five or six clicks faster, but that's nothing unusual. Lots of times on gigs, things will speed up. Uh, that's okay, as long as it feels good. You don't want it to slow down. That's a lot worse. Uh, sometimes the sax player will play behind the beat or the sax section uh, will do that. You've just got to navigate things here. You know, that's the job uh, of the rhythm section is really to navigate those tempos, make things feel good. Don't fight it, work with it, okay? So uh, this tune used a lot of these uh, kind of linear rhythms here, and this is the section. These are linear exercises, and this... Uh, starts in track nine of the CD, CD2, if you have that. Not sure on the MP3s how that's going to work, because that's not what I have. So, But anyway, it's the linear exercises in four, and in my book it's page 24. So let's go there, and that the first one is track nine. And what you're going to do is you're going to play these rhythms between the snare drum and the bass drum, with the snare drum being the short sounds and the bass drum being the long sounds. Now, that is the general rule, like if we're setting parameters, that would be the parameter. The first thing I teach, though, is for students to be able to play these all with the left hand. So if you look at this first one, it looks like this. So I can't remember if that's faster or slower than the tempo that you're going to hear in a minute. But that's what you need to be able to do first. So you can sing the rhythms. Bop, bop, boo, da, boo, da, boo, do, bop. Ba, do, da, do, bop, boo, ja, boo, do, wop. Okay, whatever you're going to do there. Excuse my horrible scatting. But you need to be able to sing these when you're playing them. And the long sounds here are the quarter notes. The short sounds are going to be the eighth notes. All right, And then you could divide them up between the bass drum and the snare drum. And you can go up, down, all around. In that Nathan's number piece, you saw me doing that during the ensemble sections. Sometimes uh, this stuff is too dense to try to catch around the drums. You don't want to do that. And you don't want to do a lot of fills either because it interrupts the flow of the groove. So that's what this section is about. It's really, really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through all of these. They go through twice on the recordings. And you'll hear how I interpret these. So we'll start with the first one. So uh, the second time you saw how I filled in with the bass drum. That's a really common thing to do. That helps the brass and the saxes to breathe there. Ba ba boo da boo da ba doo da. That's another way of catching these. So we'll go to the next one. Same kind of thing, filling in there with the bass drum. And number three. <laughs> kind of like shiny stockings there, the bassy. Frank Foster tune, really. All right, and then we'll go to number four. That 
that's a good example of choking or cutting the cymbals off when there's a short ending. And here's number five. All right, that's more of a Coltrane, McCoy Tanner kind of thing there. So there's, this one's really good. There's a lot of ways to play this, and I'm going to show you uh, some different ways to play that. So you can fill in all of these notes like this. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one way that works. It's just filling around those figures. And here's number six. All right, and number seven. And number eight. Again, practice muting the cymbals at the end when there's short notes. And number nine. That sounds like Satin Doll. <laughs> and number 10. All right, let's talk a little about this one. So this is one you can do this sort of trading off. So. That's a really good way to catch figures sometimes. So basically you're just alternating with the cymbal and the bass drum in unison and filling in with the snare. So. so after you learn how to play it like this, you want to try that. We'll play it one more time for you. Let's do these in three for you. Uh, this is on page 25. So this will be number, uh, number one, track 30. Same kind of thing, bass drum, snare drum, okay? And number two. So that's very common, the two against three thing. A lot of ways to catch up, but the basic way is. You'll find that all over the place. Any 314 really is going to have that figure. And number three. So those tenuto markings, those are long. I like to play those with rolls or cymbals. One. 
Uh, sometimes you can mix a short sound like I did there with a long sound. It actually sounds good. As long as there's sound under it, like cymbals happening, you're, you'll be fine. And number four. So that one, you can do triplet things like this. We are ghosting, filling in with the snare drum, those upbeat kinds of figures. And number five. Again, long and short sounds, important. And number six. And there you see me alternating snare drum, bass drum. Not just snare drum, not just bass drum. And number seven. That one's pretty bright. You see sometimes I'm filling in with my hi-hat. That's really a nice thing to do. It's not as, obviously, low as the bass drum and not in, as impactful. It's a light way to fill in these figures, just like I was doing earlier with the bass drum, filling in the figures. And here's number eight. And once again, using my hi-hat sum to fill in there. And number nine. And number 10. So some of those figures, you don't have to play them all. You saw I was playing upbeats there with the bass drum. Let me show you a different way of playing this, where I'm alternating. And you see again, I'm choking all sound at the end there. So that's it for the linear exercises. So you'll see uh, here, Nathan's number with some different views. Just pay careful attention to the two feel. I'm starting there on the hi-hat. You don't have to do that, but I am. And then moving to the cymbal when we go into four. And the way that I'm catching all of these unison figures on the second page here. Not big, but between the hands and the feet while still playing time. We'll see you next time with the final part of this series.